Hi guys, so today I have a special video. <laughs> so I'm sure you guys have seen this like all over YouTube recently. Um, basically, YouTubers are going back and looking at their super cringy old high school photos and they're recreating their looks. So I first found out about this challenge through I Like Wiley. I watched her video of her recreating her old high school look and I thought it was so funny and it was so cute and I really wanted to do one too but if you guys don't know this already I think I only mentioned it once in a previous video but I graduated high school when I was 15 um, it's a long story I'll tell you guys about it you know in another video one day but basically yeah I graduated when I was really young so I didn't start wearing makeup until I was like 16 and 17 uh, when I was a college student so yeah I actually don't have anything to recreate for you guys. I really love this challenge. I think it's so cute and it's one of the most like positive challenges I've seen on YouTube where people look back at their past selves even though it's super cringy and even though everybody is laughing. Um, it sort of just reinforces the fact that they've changed so much since then and now you know they've become a person that they're proud of. Um, so yeah that's why I'm taking part in this challenge today. Let's get started. So I keep my old Facebook deactivated because there are some really old photos that nobody should ever see but for you guys and for this video I'm going to reactivate it again just for like a hot second so I can look at these photos but oh my god you guys are not ready for this I think my cringiest years were freshman and sophomore year of high school and also my first year as a college freshman so when I was like 14 to 16 um <laughs> these photos are not good <laughs> all right so like my entire life i always had really short hair like to be honest this is like it considered extremely long for me like i've never had my hair to this length um i normally keep it about this short so yeah this is an accomplishment but I remember in freshman year, I had short hair like my entire life and I was just like, you know what, I've never had a pixie cut before so I'm just gonna go for it. And I went for it and uh, hmm. I didn't look very good with it and I was just like incredibly awkward about it I feel like because like I didn't like how the hairdresser did it for me because it was already a really bad haircut but like I tried to fix it myself and I just made it so fucking ugly. So then, okay, like not only was that a disaster that led into a different disaster it led into the biggest disaster of like my freshman year which was getting into wigs i should not have been allowed the access and power of wigs um so yeah i honestly had no idea what the fuck i was doing i remember being 14 and being really really ashamed of my horrible haircut and i would just buy wigs off ebay and i would get like you know really random like cheap ones and you know obviously if it's gonna be an eight dollar wig from ebay it's gonna be a hot mess and it really was but i had no understanding of what was good or bad and that's the most shameful part but yeah i remember thinking that like it looked really good and I remember like putting in these extensions but like not blending it in with my hair properly and it was just freaking nasty and I remember no matter how fucking hot it was like no matter how much I was suffering I would never take off my wig and I remember I would just be doing PE and I would have this like long like nappy wig and I would just be sweating like fucking crazy and everyone would be like May like why don't you take off your wig like you know you, you look really uncomfortable and it's also like a hundred degrees and I'll be like bitch don't tell me what to do I'm keeping my wig on and they try to tell me but I did not listen. <laughs> the worst part about my love for wigs and extensions is that I really did not know how to fucking take care of them. I did not know how to wash them. I did not know how to even brush them. Why didn't I think about brushing my wigs? Oh, here's a photo of me being so embarrassed about my short haircut. And honestly, looking back at it now, it's not even that bad. Like, it, it, it was a lot worse that I suffered with all of those wigs during PE class, trying to play basketball with my wigs. Trying to run the mile with my wigs, I remember that. I remember when I was in high school, I was so obsessed with puffy paints and I actually have a bottle right in front of me. This is a really bad example because this is really ugly and I don't even know why I still have this. This is from like, holy shit. 
three years ago. I used to be so obsessed with these and I felt like I was like the freaking Picasso of my school because I knew how to use these and utilize them for arts and crafts. So basically they're like 3D fabric paints. It has a really thin tip like this so you kind of just like squeeze um, whatever like design or letters you want on your fabric. Let it dry for 24 hours and you know you've got something cool and customized. When I look at this I feel like wow like this was such like a so it's like a 90s kids thing. I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. Do people still use this stuff? But anyway, yeah, like I was like the super artsy kid back in school and um, Yeah, looking back at it using fabric paint to like, you know, draw shit isn't very crafty at all I have two really really bad stories um, <laughs> surrounding like my I don't know like my horrible misuse of <laughs> puppy paint. Um, the first story I don't have a photo for which like I, I wish I wish I kept a shirt honestly and I wish I had photos but I don't but basically I had a best friend back in like freshman year and we were both really fucking into BL and you know what like that's cool you know like past me you knew what the fuck was up but where it went really wrong was i remember for christmas i bought us matching shirts and they were just plain t-shirts and of course i used my puffy paints and i our favorite anime was d gray man my favorite character was alan her favorite character was Kanda. We shipped them together, so obviously I made a shirt where mine said Alan on the front, hers said Kanda on the front, and on the back it had their names combined together, Yolen, the ship name, and it was fucking stupid, but I felt so excited to wear them and I felt so freaking happy. And I remember that I like stayed up like really late at night like making them and everything. And then the next day like I brought it to school on a hanger because it wasn't even dried yet, but I was so excited to show it to her. And I was like, look, like I made this for you, Merry Christmas. And like we were like such dorky, weird fucking kids back then. But honestly, it was a good fucking time. I enjoyed it. <laughs> And the second part of this story, which I actually have a photo for it, like this is so fucking shameful. <laughs> but I'm a better person now so I can laugh at how I used to be. Yeah, this is a photo of me and my old high school best friend Crystal, which is still my close friend now. Um, yeah, but if you zoom in onto my backpack strap, you can see that with red puffy paint, I like literally wrote D Grey Man like on the backpack strap so that I would fucking walk around and people would see D Grey Man on my backpack strap. So I was a real cringy kid in my freshman year of high school. We've established that as a fact already. Uh, let's see what else happened. I found a ton of really cute photos of when I used to be in color guard slash marching band when I was in high school and I was a band student like all of my middle school years and I was like so like incredibly happy. I loved band so much and I loved like my middle school band teacher. Shout out to Mr. Morvis. Even though it was literally boot camp like every single day and even though we were suffering a lot, I think it really like made us like get closer together and made us really like enjoy the experience that we were having. It's honestly like no other experience I have ever had. So I'm really really grateful that like my parents, you know, worked hard to put the money into me being able to have this experience and join this extracurricular activity and Look at this photo of me. I'm so tan compared to how I am now. Like I was so healthy and I was so freaking happy. This was when I started getting into fashion a lot. So I started spending more time like on the internet and looking up sort of like styles that I was really interested in. Um, yeah, you guys can definitely see like slow changes in my style um, and like the way I tried to like present myself. Oh my God, I look so freaking young in this photo. That's crazy, like that's bizarre, like that like that baby face. But oh my god, I finally learned how to do eyebrows. And this is when I started thrifting and a lot of the stuff that I'm wearing in these photos, actually the majority of it is actually thrifted stuff, so good job me. I was so like crazy into thrifting back then, even more than I am now. I looked like a fucking pile of trash, like I did not know what I was doing and I would just like throw all of this shit together. I started being a little bit less cringy, at least in terms of the way I looked. Like I was still a really weird fucking kid, but you know, I was starting to learn how to be less gross. 
Good job, me. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. That didn't last for long because I joined the Weeaboo community. Mm hmm, I did. And, uh, okay, what I'm about to show you guys. Oh my god, I'm so freaking gross. <laughs> okay, first of all, I did not know how to cut wigs. What is that? <laughs> Signable, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Okay, I feel like I feel like anybody who's ever been through like a really vigorous weeaboo phase knows exactly what I'm talking about. Like you cannot escape the cat ears. Yeah, I had my moment too. A really funny story. <laughs> I was eating lunch with one of my um, old close friends from high school, and I was like, showed tell me if you remember this, and I showed him this photo, and he laughed so hard. <laughs> And he was like, I don't know what's cringier, the fact that you're wearing cat ears or the fact that they were mine and I let you borrow them. <laughs> okay, so in my defense, I never actually owned cat ears, but yeah, it's pretty fucking it's pretty fucking terrible that I actually wore like the full like cat ears and like paws to a public event. But you know what? I can't be angry at myself. Like I just I just look at this awkward as fuck face and I'm just like god I can't be angry at you I honestly can't hate myself for being so gross because I mean like I was just a kid like trying to have fun you know it's just like you know what yeah you're fucking nasty but do what you do because when you grow up and be an adult you're just gonna be fucking sad honestly as cringy as it was it was it was a good time in my life I think I had a really good time just like not really fucking caring about anything and just like being like gross and nerdy all the time like now that I've gotten a little bit older my interest in like like anime and cosplay and things like that is definitely like dropped really really low and I think it's just because I've been exposed to it for so many years in like my adolescence and childhood that like I don't know like, I'm not really interested in, in it anymore so yeah like you know back then I guess it's good that I lived it up I was still pretty awkward and still kind of cringy but like I started dyeing my hair at this point and you know uh, I first went with like a medium colored brown I started experimenting with other browns so definitely I didn't go for like all of this straight away so yeah you guys can see these photos which is pretty cool seeing how like I slowly like transitioned out of my weird like not knowing what the fuck I was wearing phase. So after graduating high school, I was like 15 and a half or like 16 in these photos. And this is when I started to get like really into fashion and like started discovering like my own style. Here is where I began to dye my hair pink. Um, definitely my parents were against it at first, but I kind of just went for it and like, you know, ease them into it um, but yeah like I just started by dyeing sections of my hair so I dyed like a strip of my hair and I ombre the rest so I had like a medium colored brown hair and then like light pink the rest and holy shit I thought I was like the fucking master of dyeing my own hair do not bleach your own hair I started wearing makeup at this point and it didn't it doesn't look hideous and I started painting my nails and I started doing my eyebrows so yeah I think I think from then on, I was on a pretty good track. Maybe like a few months to a year afterwards, I went like full pink. And ever since then, like I just really immersed myself in like my hobbies, my talents and fashion and also beauty. So yeah, this was when I started feeling like really excited about changing my look. And it was a good time of self-discovery. I have this one collage that I made of the colors that I did for myself when I first started like really, really getting into hair dyeing. Um, like four-ish years ago. Yeah, um, I think this really like embodies the sort of look that I used to try to go for. I feel like I used to try to go so hard for the typical like Chinese idol look. I used to be so self-conscious about my lip size back when I was in high school because I remember this one time one of my friends I don't even know who the fuck it was, but she like out of nowhere was like, May, you have sausage lips. And I was like, bitch, 
You're right. The whole sort of like East Asian beauty standard is like really, really similar. Like big eyes, tall nose, thin lips. And like that was definitely not my proportions back then. Like I was really baby faced and I had like really thick lips. And it took me a long time to embrace that. And like looking back at these old photos from like three, four years ago, I can really see how the way I did my makeup really sort of like tried to adhere to those beauty standards. But now I'm just like, no, fuck it. Like these photos definitely do not look like me. Looking back at these photos, I'm like, bitch, you did not love yourself. You did not embrace your features. Oh my god, and I remember that I wrote this really, really long tutorial on Tumblr back way, way, way back in the day when I actually had a Tumblr, and I was just motherfucking rampant on it. I remember I would reblog like the nastiest fucking BL, and it's like, yeah, I still love that shit, I ain't gonna lie, but like, I was so, I was so public about it. Like, looking back at it, I'm just like, wow. I really did not fucking care, like I had zero shame. Off topic, but yeah, back when I had a Tumblr and like, I deleted it so you guys will not squeeze a Tumblr out of me. Yeah, back then when I thought I was the master of dyeing my own hair and bleaching it at home, which I was not because it was so dried and like, it was just, honestly like, it was fucked up, it was nasty, but it looked good in photos so like, everybody always complimented like my hair because they didn't actually have to like, physically touch it and it always looked good in photos. So like everybody was like, oh my god, like please write a tutorial. How do you dye your hair? Blah blah this blah that and I was just like, yeah, like I'm fucking on top of the world. Like I know how to do this shit. I wrote this super long Tumblr post, um, being as detailed as possible about all the steps that I used to do. And yeah, honestly, I was giving people and like I was giving people instructions to destroy their hair. But honestly, like I, I don't feel that bad about it because this is like the pretty standard, like do it yourself at home like bleaching and dyeing routine so you know what like it's, it's cool i wasn't the only one who was doing this <gasps> this was when i met b this was when i met b like three years ago and i think this was our first hangout or something like that oh my god back then b was so cute like i was cringy as fuck and then b was just perfect and cute and everybody loved her including me so i'm just like what the fuck b oh my god i remember this photo i was like b i'm so strong i could carry you look and be impressed and i like tried to pick her up and i like immediately dropped her like why did i do that like why was i so convinced that I would be able to do that. Anyway, um, I was gonna go a bit further, but I think <laughs> I think you guys get the idea. And also, my laptop ran out of battery, so yeah, that's 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 over with. Honestly, this was a really fun challenge. I mean, if I was a little bit younger and I did this video, definitely I would be so embarrassed about how I used to be back then. I would be like, oh my god, no, like don't show the internet, like hide it forever, like holy crap. But honestly. <laughs> I had a good fucking time reliving all of these cringy memories because it just really reinforces the fact that like I've changed so much and in a positive way because you know like I work really hard for myself and yeah like you know everything pays off in the end and I just really want to like show you guys like how different your lives could be like if you're not happy with the way you are right now give it a few years and honestly you don't know how things could change and you don't know how you could change yourself everybody goes through like the cringy teenage phase so like I don't feel that bad about myself, but also it's like I can't hate myself for the way I used to be back then and I feel like nobody should because you know like you're always just trying your best as a kid just trying to live your life trying to be as happy as you can and you know just do whatever the fuck you want and it's like I definitely can't be the same way now so it's like yeah I was fucking gross but I lived it up so yeah that's it for this video uh, Thank you guys for joining me today and I will see you guys again next time.